This is Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin on the morning of a championship game. On the other side of the world, more than 125,000 GIs did not take part in the ritual of a championship game that is practiced in millions of American homes. And so the National Football League decided to sponsor the first sports group to visit them. One week later, Frank Gifford, Willie Davis, Sam Huff, and John Unitas arrived, bringing the NFL to Vietnam. February. Looks like you're hitting them all. Yeah, yeah, you get out here, you hit one a little. <laughs> right. Well, we know that, but uh, you got to. If everybody just comes around and hits the big places like the Nang, then uh, you, you right. really don't get the inside of what's going on. There are Americans in Vietnam. More than 200,000 of them, and they're upholding our international commitment. Hanoi and Saigon represent the pulse of two ideologies in Southeast Asia, and the cleavage between has become a new battlefield for freedom. The Ho Chi Minh Trail is the communist lifeline joining the Viet Cong in North Vietnam, through Laos and Cambodia. Over this trail periodically come the men and material that supply the Viet Cong. Americans are filling this breach in places like Quang Tri, Hue, Da Nang, Quang Gai, Kam Tung, An Ke, Play Ku, Ban Thi, Bain Hua. The territory over which the four visitors from the National Football League chose to travel to entertain and to be a part of another kind of a championship team. One of the very first people that uh, the four of us met on our trip here to Vietnam is a, a Frenchman by the name of Charles Bonnet, who is doing a, an article for Life magazine. How do you think uh, things are going in this uh, little war that we have here? Well, the war is going much better now since about one year. I think that uh, one year ago, everything was lost here in Vietnam. But uh, since that, you have been doing uh, very well. You have been escalating. And uh, those Marines, those first air cab, and all those uh, people you brought over here, are doing a marvelous job, and I think they're on the good path. I think uh, you're on the, the path of victory. Uh, what do you think, uh, singly, if uh, you had to single out one thing, what do you think primarily is the difference between uh, the Americans being in here and the French? Well, you have other, uh, you see, for us, we have a limit in the French army, but uh, yourself in the, is almost limitless, like the Air Force. The Air Power is uh, such uh, a big factor in this uh, war, now uh, you can bring uh, Air Force uh, 10 planes, 20 planes, 100 planes, wherever you need them, and so fast, within half an hour, and uh, that's, uh, I think the VC cannot stand those things, uh, they get smashed by those, and uh, unfortunately, when we were here ourselves, I remember, when we were in an uh, operation, we were getting uh, one or two B-26, and uh, we were very happy. That was about all we have. And uh, if we had the air power, I think Gibeon Fu would have been uh, another issue for the French, and the uh, old war would have been something else. And you've seen a lot of fighting go on. How does the Vietnamese themselves, uh, how are they doing in this war, Charles? I think they are doing very well. Uh, I think it's some outfit 
of the Vietnamese, like the Ranger, like uh, the Marines, like uh, some of the people of the Air Force, you will find some uh, soldiers as good as them, but I don't think in the world you can find any better than the Vietnamese. They have been uh, fighting for 20 years, and uh, sometimes they get a little tired, but uh, if you consider that uh, a U.S. soldier came over here for one year, so he can put a hole in himself for one year, but those people have to live with, with the war. This is uh, not an American war, but it's a Vietnamese war, and uh, if, if it's going to be one, it's going to be one as a combination. The Vietnamese yes. are going to be playing a big part in it. Is this your opinion also? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. They need your support. They need to win the, this war, but uh, they have a job to do, and I think the main job is to be done by the Vietnamese. But I, I hope to see in the future, very near future, now that you have escalated the war, that you have brought some troop over here, I hope to see a kind of economic help, a kind of uh, Marshall Plan in Vietnam, like uh, the Marshall Plan was in Europe at the end of the war, and he saved us from communists at the time. So I wish to see some kind of the same thing here in Vietnam, because it's at least 51% of uh, the war in Vietnam is the economic help. I must say that the VC are, maybe, are very good soldiers, but they are not 10 feet tall. And they're, those kids from the first air cab, when they were, I was with them in Yadong Valley, and they were splendid, you know, they do an outstanding job, and they, they really killed the VC over there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the men that has been here for a long time, possibly longer than any American, and uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Hi. But with the American troops, the topic of conversation was pro football. No Marylanders, huh? Huh? 49ers? Great. Texas, I'm a real. Well, that's big. You're always picking a loser, huh? Dallas. Oh, Dallas? Where you going? You're from Dallas? Oh, San Antonio. San Antonio. We played Dallas in the playoff bowl. Yeah, I know. I know well. The strongest team. In the, in, the, in the league, but we just happened to beat them. You're telling me you took <laughs> beat my bill for too. <laughs> yeah. Bob Hayes, Dallas Cowboys. It's fast, boy. Well, he says if they start shooting at him out here, he's going to break Hayes' record. <laughs> he'll be running about a, an 8 900. You think, you think he'll be a good end uh, when he gets yeah, his hands up? Tremendous, uh, tremendous ability and <laughs> tremendous moves. It just takes him a while for the experience, you know. It's pretty hard to cover that man like that one on one, eh? Yeah. Oh, they try to tie him up. Get him down there and hit him around a couple of times, see how he likes that. <laughs> they get on top of him and uh, hit him a couple of times, he might uh, decide to take it easy. What about sales compared to Brown? Who? Gale Sales compared Sales. to Jim Gale Brown. Sayers? Oh, they're two different type of runners. <laughs> Jimmy, of course, is a power runner, and I think probably Gale has more speed than Jimmy. And uh, <laughs> But the, Jimmy is, uh, is a power <laughs> runner and is just. I don't think there's anybody in the league that's better than he is. He's what been around for 10 the years. The difference between Jimmy Till and Jimmy Brown? Uh, Brown's speed once he gets past the line of scrimmage. They're both real strong right into the line and at the line of scrimmage. He's got better acceleration going into the line, doesn't he? More or less. Yeah, quicker? Started. Quicker start. <laughs> I think he does have a quicker start, but I think Brown gets a little bit more distance than Taylor does. Once he gets past that line of scrimmage, he's pretty tough. Jimmy is good for about 15, 20, 25 yards, but uh, they don't catch him. What do you think happened to the Browns this year? At the end just, of the season? They just had too much Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Right. They got a tiger by the tail. <laughs> Same way with Baltimore, wasn't it? Yeah. Cleveland took care of us the year before, 27 and nothing. That's, a, well, that's the first shot out I've been in, I guess, in 10 years. <laughs> We've been beat, but not like that. Uh, we made a few mistakes, and it cost us six points every time we made it. <laughs> and that's what generally happens. <laughs> On your, uh, when you go into a ball game, do you have an individual book on each team you play, or do you have one big book that's covering all the ball clubs in your league? On a team we play? Oh, we just study the films on them, and you know the personnel from year to year, they stay pretty much the same. You know what they can do and what they can't do. In New York? New York! You know, you missed the subway start. Yeah, I know. Bad about that. that. <laughs> 21 more days, I'll be back in Brooklyn. We have an orphanage about roughly 200 yards in the back of us, off to the side. Heard anybody? Uh, Injured a couple of kids, and not serious. But uh, that's the way the VCR. Well, they've got a film of the uh, playoff game with the overtime, and uh, they'd like to show it here.
and uh, maybe uh, Willie Davis will make a few comments, huh? <laughs> we, however, get hurt real big with the long runs. So consequently, they be like, we'll have good pursuit out on the play. And one guy get in there and disorganize it, and the other three guys will get over. And then we have real good linebackers. He, like Robinson, <laughs> left linebacker, he's 6'3 and about 240. Caffrey is about 6'4 and 250. And Nishka is about 6'3 and 230. So our linebackers are exceptionally big. And we have a good tackling secondary. He really would probably one of the best tacklers in the league. And, uh, but, you know, it, so it makes our overall defense pretty sound. And uh, we just, we, we thrive on the feeling that uh, as long as a team don't hurt us big, then uh, they'll make a mistake sooner or later. You know, otherwise, it's hard for a team just to take a ball and you make them use 20, uh, maybe 17, yeah. or even maybe 12 plays to get across your goal line. Then that's, that's 12 chances they have for error. Uh, 20, and most often uh, they're going to make one. Either they, some guy will get in motion, they'll have a fumble, uh, or maybe you'll, by knifing in there, you'll throw a play for a loss. But shoot, we don't, we don't have a, a Unitas, or we don't have a Jim Brown, a guy who can probably make the difference himself. But I think that it, maybe it has helped us in a lot of ways in that we don't have this kind of guy. We feel a an individual responsibility to the 40th man that we all got to be at our best to to win. So I think it helps, you know, because uh, yourself yeah, yourself even yourself. like when Baltimore lost Unanimous, they were actually a better ball club in terms of each individual being up and figuring that he was going to have to play more. And that's why I think they were really tough uh, those last three ball games. Uh, the Hornets sure played a game there. And then yeah, in fact, his his last four ball games are. <coughs> Were, well, his last three. I guess the coach over there, he scored five touchdowns in Baltimore. And he had a good game in the playoff, and he had a good uh, game in the championship game. But uh, uh, I ain't, you know, up until that time, uh, he, he was having injury problems and this kind of thing. So, really, it should be a real healthy situation there next year with Gabowski behind Taylor and and Anderson, either in front of Horning or yeah, so close him. behind him, he won't have no chance to write a book on this. <laughs> in the many compounds established throughout Vietnam, defense and survival are the order of the day. Comforts are few, and the simplest, such as a tiny pet, a clean shirt, or a hot cup of coffee make a world of difference. With the ever-present threat of armed attack by the Viet Cong guerrillas, weaponry is a required course in these compounds. Frank Gefford gets a full briefing from the primitive crossbow, a favorite in the Montagnard arsenal, a full briefing to the latest army automatic weapon. With me is Lieutenant John Butt from Woodbury, New Jersey. Well, John, I suppose you'll be uh very happy to be getting back to New Jersey. Yeah, it's going to be a big thrill. It seemed like a long time. I uh, we've been talking here about football a lot, and uh, I watched the Eagles all the time. And I used to go to New York once in a while to watch them uh, when you were playing. <coughs> ben Eric was a, a big friend of mine. Oh, Johnny was <laughs> a friend of mine. <laughs> For Willie Davis, Sam Huff, Frank Gifford, and John Unitas, Vietnam outside the compounds was a curious composite. A note from Frank Gifford's diary reads, Conflict is the keynote, and survival is the work of the day. The struggle for survival marks the face of every hamlet. The peasants, it seems, are always on the move, seeking a bit more from life. 
In the marketplace, the means of exchange is simple barter. Goods in return for goods. A life for a life. The biggest marketplace of all is urban cosmopolitan Saigon. Here the struggle for survival of the state takes on real dimensions. It is more realistic than in the isolated hamlets where life from day to day is the first question for consideration. The answer is in the children. The fortunate go to school. The United States helps with supplies, but the fortunate are few in Vietnam. For Willie Davis, who is also a school teacher, this is still another education. With us here in Khantum is Captain Tom Culver, former halfback at West Point and now an American advisor to the Vietnamese on psychological warfare. And with us are some of the harvest of Tom's work, the VC that Tom is rehabilitating here. And Tom, how does your operation work here? We have a number of, number of uh, different programs, Frank, in our psychological warfare. Uh, one of our, of our most fruitful programs is the air loudspeaker and leaflet operations that we run. Uh, we have 29 uh, what we call Chu Hoi returnees here, voluntary defectors from the Viet Cong. And uh, these people have all come in because they, because they have uh, heard our air loudspeaker operations or picked up leaflets we have dropped. And uh, this is the way that they found out they could come in and be treated well and uh, get away from the Viet Cong. Well, Tom, what was, uh, what was their reaction when they came in? Uh, they're told, I guess, in, uh, back in the boonies, as was put, uh, that they'll be killed by the Americans, right? Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, I think they're quite surprised that they're treated so well. Uh, we give them blankets and uh, new clothing and uh, plenty of food, plus some spending money, and they have the free run of the town. They're not kept here as prisoners, and they're uh, treated quite well. We have a problem in uh, treating them too well. They don't want to leave after they've been re-indoctrinated. Basically, they, uh, all of them live uh, the same with the Viet Cong in this province. They live in small camps uh, out in the jungle. Uh, they're closely watched by uh, their fellow Viet Cong to make sure they don't try to escape. Uh, they eat uh, rats and uh, some manioc and potatoes that they're able to uh, grow and some of the uh, low-grade uh, brown rice that they're able to grow. Uh, they don't have enough food. Uh, the weather is very, very cold at night in uh, Kantum province, particularly during the dry season. Uh, they have no medical treatment. Uh, anyone who is wounded uh, generally dies from bad infections. Well, Tom, how long have you been here now? I've been here uh, 16 months now, Frank. Well, Tom, uh, our congratulations on a fine job, and uh, let me ask you, do you plan on staying on? I think so. Uh, I'm going down to Saigon and apply for another extension, I believe. Visiting the Army hospitals was disturbing duty. They felt a smile and a greeting were too little to help, but nobody else thought so. We're lucky though, I'm not going to lose a hand, maybe about Hi, right, Sam, how are you doing? John and I are here. Hello there. I'm here in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Well, I'm 80 miles from here, I'm over in the We ain't doing so good this year. Here it is. Here it is. You step on a... Can I do something? Are you fine? No, I got shot. I understand they had some shooting around here last night. You can't ever tell about these bloodthirsty PCs, you know. Visits to the aircraft carriers, Kitty Hawk, Hornet, and Wasp were also a part of the itinerary.
after the Navy put on a show of its own, the boys entertained with the help of closed circuit TV. Shows in the field with shells exploding nearby were a different story. In 13 days, Frank Gifford, Willie Davis, Sam Huff, and Johnny Unitas visited the whole of South Vietnam. They greeted soldiers and sailors and entertained with films and stories of the National Football League. For the four men of the NFL, it was a grueling effort, but it was good. There was a satisfaction of achievement, like a touchdown in Vietnam. For the men of the armed forces, it was relief from demanding duty, a smile over the grim face of war.